the birch tree, Uiguas Matik, as it's known in Ojibwe. This tree carries many gifts and teachings. A few we will share with you today, along with some identifying characteristics. <laughs> has a white bark and then it has a, an inner bark as well and uh, the white bark of course we use that for uh, for starting fires eh? Yeah, starting a fire and, uh, <coughs> yeah. and then in the springtime too they uh, tap them for uh, Sape, the uh, bird sap. If left alone, the birch can grow to be a very tall tree. There's the birch in the foot there. Yeah, that's so nice and white looking. Paper birch. Paper birch. I just never really noticed that before, but they have like black branches, eh? Yeah, black. Huh. Interesting. There's a bunch of Thing there. That looks like a nut. Yeah, it does, eh? A bowl? Or no, what do you get they call them? Yeah. Got the mottos too. One of the uses of the bark is to make baskets or food offerings. Unfortunately, at times, too much bark is removed from the tree, exposing the inner bark, and this hurts or damages the tree. And that protective bark is not easily replaced. That is a big birch. That is not to say that the tree will die, but it will remain scarred for the rest of its life. Another identifying characteristic are these fungal growths that are found on birch trees. Most often on either dead or dying trees. Yeah, and those are shelf mushrooms, eh? They're called shelf mushrooms. Yeah. Somebody was telling me I think they're good for headaches, eh? Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, ceremonial smudge. Yeah. Do they only appear on dead trees? Or? And finally, there is no denying the black marks and small horizontal lines on the tree itself. If you're lucky, 
you might even find some chaga growing on one. <laughs>